Brian Wilson, Mary Catherine Hamm, Brian Neiman, today's newsmakers, and you, the morning majority. AM 630. It is 637 on the morning majority. Yes, we're into week number two on the big FM stick, F 105.9 FM. You can still hear us, of course, on AM 630 WMAL. Wilson, Neiman, and Ham. And on the phone is our good friend, our favorite Democrat, Lanny Davis. And Lanny, you know, I would imagine that this is a very difficult time to be a Democrat. I look at the polls right now, and there were a number of polls out yesterday that show that uh, it's going to be a very heavy lift for the Obama administration to get reelected. They're very concerned about the moderate middle that has left them. And then when you look at the congressional lineup, it, it now appears that uh, the Republicans, though it's very early in the game, but the Republicans do seem to have a pretty good you know, chance of taking the Senate. Uh, some people would say it could be a clean sweep for Republicans in the coming election. Are are Democrats getting sort of suicidal about all this? Well, listen, you're talking to somebody that um, is always right in my predictions. Didn't I predict that the Boston Red Sox would win the pennant? So, <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, it was a choke job by the Red Sox, and it's, been, it's a choke job by the Democrats right now. Lanny. I mean, well, really, Lanny. I mean, they, they they have got to be so dispirited when they look at the at the political landscape. Well, I think looking at the economic numbers, um, certainly, unless the economic numbers turn around, it's always hard for incumbents, especially with high unemployment, and uh, there's a sense that the country is not functioning. And incumbents, I, I saw a poll that showed every incumbent, uh, Republican and Democrat, is in danger. So, yes, there are, are more Democrats in the Senate. There are more Democrats in danger in the Senate. So there's certainly a, a great risk of a, of a great defeat. If the unemployment numbers come back and the Republicans continue to commit uh, political suicide by the way they're conducting themselves, then I think um, Barack Obama has looked like a great candidate again in the last several weeks. But I think it does come down to the numbers on the ground. I don't think anything we do is going to change the fact that unless the economy turns around, it's not going to be pretty in two thousand. Well, well, of course, you know, the Democrats probably, they could probably all turn it around at the convention in North Carolina, except that it's being hosted by Governor Bev Perdue, who said the most incredibly stupid thing we've heard in a long time, that perhaps we should suspend the elections. What did you think when you heard it? I mean, first of all, we thought she was joking. It turns out, when you listen to the actual tape, it doesn't sound like she's joking, Lanny. Well, I assume she was joking. We can't, under the Constitution, do anything like that. And she must be kind of whimsically, I haven't heard the quote, but I doubt she was saying that seriously. Well, okay, I would, I would, I would ask you to go back and listen to the tape, which is easily available on the web. You know, you can get, go to Drudge. I think they've got a link to it. And then they come back and tell me you think that she was joking. Well, she's not talking about rescinding the U.S. Constitution, so I don't know how she would be anything other than joking. All right, Lanny, um, you mentioned that the Republicans were committing suicide. How are they committing suicide? How are the Republicans committing suicide right now? Well, I just think the way the debates are going, it's if you ask anybody who watches a Republican debate, so what solutions are there for the country? How are they going to bring down unemployment? Uh, at least Obama has a program that, has some Republican elements in it, and there isn't a single Republican ready to support it. So now, what's the Republican program for bringing down unemployment? It's the big issue facing the country. And the answer you get is no. There's no affirmative program, it's just no. That's um, weird. Every, every, every one of the 56 points in Romney's plan says no? I, I feel like I read it differently. Than and were the 999 well, plan from Herman Cain or John Huntsman's plan? plan? As far as I can tell, bring down unemployment. He has a plan. Uh, cutting taxes is not going to bring down unemployment, or at least not for several years. He's not going to pay off our debt by cutting taxes. So I don't understand the Romney plan. It's 68 points. That leads me to no conclusion. I do agree that Romney is the strongest candidate for the Republicans to put up. I think he'd be the most formidable candidate because he does come across as an adult. He does seem to have uh, a level of competence and uh, at least know-how that Governor Perry certainly has, I think, written himself out of the contest just by not showing that he's a serious candidate. 
You wrote a letter, a uh, love letter to Bill Clinton this week. Has it come to that where we're writing uh, love letters to Bill Clinton, uh, you know, in September of uh, 2011? Uh, it's a, it's a, it is a bit of a love letter. Yeah, it is. There's, there is a, a historical legacy that's factual, which is before Bill Clinton, Democrats had lost five out of six presidential elections, not just losing, losing by landslides. I remember going into the 92 campaign, we actually thought it was hopeless to ever win the presidency back given the solid South, Southwest, Rocky Mountain states and farm states, it was all Republican. So Clinton proved by repositioning the Democratic Party as a centrist party that you could compete, and he not only competed, he won two terms. So I talk about his legacy, but I, I did give him a love letter at the very end by uh, seeing in the White House with President Bush and President Clinton, where the two of them, in complete disagreement on issues, connected on the need to be civil and to be able to disagree agreeably. And it was one of these magic moments uh, where you had a room full of Clinton supporters giving a standing ovation to President Bush and President Clinton. That is the type of politics I think Bill Clinton practiced that we are missing today, and that's sort of my my love letter about going back to that type of a, a political dynamic where we can disagree without demonizing each other. All right, honey, we will leave it at that, and we will say thank you very much for coming on the program this morning. I, I hope you, you didn't comment that I'm working at night <laughs> doing... Uh, 900 telephone numbers with this hoarse voice. Yeah, I, well, we thought you were, it was your FM voice. That's what we thought. All right. See you, laddie. Thank you. Bye-bye.